I remember at the hearing about a month ago, you said you're still trying to get your head around everything. What are you trying to figure out? Well, the first step is find out exactly what happened. Uh, and uh, we're trying to get our arms around that, getting all the relevant information from the various agencies uh, and uh, starting to talk to some of the people that have information. You know, the thing that's interesting about this is that this was handled at a very senior level of these departments. It wasn't handled in the ordinary way that investigations or counterintelligence activities are conducted. It was sort of an ad hoc small group. And most most of these people are no longer with the FBI or the CIA or the other agencies involved. This appears to run deep. Why is it so hard to figure out? Well, was, uh, uh, there are two things here. One, no one's really looked at it. Uh, I think there's a misconception out there that we know a lot about what happened. Uh, the fact of the matter is Bob Mueller did not look at the government's activities. He was looking at the, whether or not the Trump campaign had uh, conspired with the Russians. But he was not going back and looking at the counterintelligence program. And uh, we have a number of uh, investigations underway that touch upon it, the main one being the Office of Inspector General that's looking at the FISA warrants. But uh, as far as I'm aware, no one has really looked across uh, the whole waterfront. So you came into this job and you started asking questions. Did you get any answers? Well, I thought when I came in, uh, from the outside that uh, all the questions that I had and many other people had uh, that would be readily uh, answered uh, once I got in, but I haven't found that to be the case. You also said back in April that you thought there was spying going on in the Trump campaign. When do you think that started? Well, I'm not going to speculate about when it started. We're going to find out when it started. It's been said that it was July of 2016. Does that sound right to you? Again, I, I don't want to speculate. What I will say is that uh, you know, I've, I've been trying to get answers to questions, and I found that a lot of the answers have been inadequate. And I, I've also found that uh, some of the explanations I've gotten don't hang together. So in, in a sense, I have more questions today than I did when I first started. Some of what things don't hang together? Some of the explanations of what occurred. Why does that matter? Well, because I think people have to find out what the government was doing during that period. If we're, if we're worried about foreign influence, for the very same reason, we should be worried about whether government officials abuse their power and put their thumb on the scale. And, and so I'm not saying that happened, uh, but I'm saying that we have to look at that. Can you say when Bob Mueller knew there was no collusion with Russia? No, I couldn't say that. No date given? No, I couldn't, I couldn't say when, when he knew. Obviously, one of the, the big challenges we face right now in law enforcement is the humanitarian crisis on the border. And a lot of that is being driven by families coming up from Central America. A related factor to that uh, is the gang violence that's prevalent in these three Northern Triangle countries, uh, MS-13, the 18th Street Gang. And so uh, the Justice Department has a very robust program down here to help the governments uh, attack this drug problem. We're working very closely with them. Have you seen success? There's been a lot of success. In the last three years, the murder rate has uh, dropped in half here in, in uh, El Salvador. And in three years, uh, in the Northern Triangle, we've been able to charge over 7,000 members of MS-13 and the 18th Street Gang. It's a great partnership we have with them, and it's helping us in the United States because MS-13 gang members that we can get down here are not going to be coming up to the United States. Uh, and also, the intelligence we gather here, uh, because we have a big uh, uh, program here to support their wiretapping and other kinds of intelligence down here, we can use that to prosecute MS-13 members in the United States. For example, in last August, we uh, uh, prosecuted uh, six uh, MS-13 members in New Jersey using intelligence that was gathered down here. How do you think John Brennan and James Clapper handled the Russian investigation? Well, again, I, I, I don't want to speculate about the facts because I don't know the facts at this point. At all? I know some facts, but it's premature to be discussed. Can you tell us what the Steele dossier had to do with this? What role did that play? Well, that's one of the questions, uh, you know, that we're going to have to look at. It, it's a very unusual situation to have uh, opposition research like that, especially one that on its face 
uh, had a number of clear mistakes and a, and a somewhat jejun analysis and to and to use that to to conduct uh, counterintelligence against the American political campaign is a strange uh, would be a strange development. I'm not sure how, what role it played, but that's something we have to look at. Do you smell a rat in this at this point? I don't know if I'd describe it a rat. I, I would just say that uh, the you know the answers I'm getting uh, are not sufficient. Just to follow up on that, Republicans have said for months that these men, Brennan, Clapper, maybe James Comey, had it in for Trump. Do you think that's true? Uh, again, I'm not going to speculate about their motives. In the period of time between Election Day and the inauguration, did anyone in government or in intelligence, did they take action to justify their decisions? Between Election Day, did you say? Between Election Day of 2016 in November and Inauguration Day. I think there were some very um, strange developments during that period. That's one of the things we want to look into. Such as? Such as uh, the handling of the meeting on January 6th between the intelligence chiefs and the president and the leaking of information subsequent to that meeting. Was that meeting in New York City? Yes. In Trump Tower? Yes. What questions do you have about what happened that day? Again, I'm not going to get into, into that. But it's on your mind? That's one of the things we, we need to look at. Can you characterize how far advanced you are in understanding that meeting? We're still in, in the stage of, of gathering all the information. Remember what the president's position has been from the beginning. Called it a hoax, called it a witch hunt, and I asked the attorney general about that. Mueller decided not to attempt to subpoena or force the issue with the president, so he made that judgment. Um, and uh, I did say the White House cooperated, and what I was referring to there was the truly unprecedented uh, uh, delivery of information in the form of millions of pages of documents and the ability to interview White House staff, including the president's White House counsel, with no holes barred, no privilege claimed at that point or anything. So that was unprecedented, and that's what I was referring to when I said the White House. Did you find that satisfactory on behalf of the White House? It's more than satisfactory. And, and, and Bob uh, Mueller obviously felt it was satisfactory. He reached his conclusions in his report. Let me come back to that point. The president calls this a witch hunt. He calls it a hoax. Would you agree with that? Well, as I, I've said, if, if you were the president, I think you would view it as a, as a witch hunt and a hoax, uh, because at the time he was saying he, he was innocent and that he was being falsely accused. And that's, if you're falsely accused, uh, you would think that something was a witch hunt. I have to say, you know, when you step back and look at this, Two, two and a half years of his administration, three years of Trump, you know, the campaign and then the first part of his administration, uh, he has been hammered uh, for something, uh, you know, for allegedly conspiring with the Russians. And that, we now know, that was simply false. Are you comfortable using those words? Witch hunt? Hoax? I use what words I use, and, and it was an investigation, but I think if I had been falsely accused, I'd, I'd be comfortable saying it was a, a witch hunt. You mentioned Bob Mueller a few moments ago. Were you surprised that he came back with no recommendation on that obstruction charge? That surprised you? Yes, that surprised okay. me. Because the, f the function of a, of a prosecutor is to make a call uh, one way or the other. Did you ask him why? Yeah, we discussed it. What did he say? Well, uh, you know, I already have said that we met on March 5th before he delivered the report and and he's he gave an explanation for it and it's pretty much reflected in the report you're okay with him testifying absolutely he works for you yes or under you yes or did what seems to be the holdup Jerry Nadler said this week it will happen soon perhaps it happens in June or not do you have any information on that my understanding is that uh, chairman uh, Nadler is talking this over with uh, Bob Mueller and his staff and trying to schedule it. So you expect it to happen? I have no reason to think it won't. Do you believe members of Mueller's team around him put pressure on him to include certain aspects in that report? I don't want to speculate because I just don't know. Do you believe he gave in any of that pressure? I don't want to speculate. I really wasn't there to watch the interaction of his staff.
Yeah, a lot of this now is just a bit of context here with regard to the Mueller stuff. There's a piece in the Wall Street Journal just this morning. Uh, it went online last night about the holdup with Bob Mueller's testimony in the House. There could be executive privilege matters that would prevent Bob Mueller from answering a lot of these questions. So there's a debate as to when this happens, and some are making a case that it could be pushed off even further. I think the first part of that answer, though, needs a little better context as well. Democrats have been letting the heavy charges against Bob Mueller, saying that he's protecting the president. He's doing all the spinning here uh, because he said the White House fully cooperated with the Mueller investigation. But there was no sit down interview. It was only a question and answer, only in writing. Remember, this was a focus of Rudy Giuliani and Jay Sekulow, the president's attorneys, for about a year's time. They did not want the president to sit down, fearing a perjury trap on behalf of those on the special counsel. So, a little more context on that. Now we move into more criticism on behalf of Democrats. Democrats. Remember, Nancy Pelosi calls him out as a liar for his testimony on the Hill back in April and the 1st and 2nd of May. Um, now, just this week, it happens that Bill Barr and Nancy Pelosi saw each other on Capitol Hill. Let's go back to this exchange and starting with the House Speaker. Yeah. Let's move further into that, that aspect of this because you, you are being heavily criticized by Democrats by the House Speaker Nancy Pelosi. She believes you lied under oath. What do you think of that charge? Well, I think it's a, it's a laughable charge, and I think it's largely being made to try to discredit me, partly because they may be concerned about the outcome of a, of a review of what happened during the, uh, during the election. What does that mean? That, that means they may be trying to under, undermine my credibility, but uh, obviously you can look at the face of my testimony and see on its face that there was nothing uh, inaccurate about it. You uh, reportedly had a conversation with her this week. Yes. What did you say to her? Well, I wouldn't call it a conversation. It was more like an icebreaker. I uh, was introduced and I asked her if she had brought her handcuffs with her. <laughs> and she said? I didn't really quite hear what she said, uh, but it, it, she wasn't unpleasant about it. What she will say, and Democrats will say, is that you were spinning on behalf of the president with the principal conclusions that you released. Uh, they, they leveled charges that you held back the mother report for several weeks. Were you spinning for the White House to buy some time? No, I wasn't. I think what they're really perhaps annoyed about is that they didn't have an opportunity to spin and that the fundamental findings of the report were out there for everybody to see uh, and they were not in a position to spin. Bill Hemmer covering a lot of ground in his interview with Bill Barr, including his relationship with the president. Take a listen here. I didn't know him before. Uh, I had only met with him um, uh, really a substantive discussion with him at the time he decided to, to uh, make uh, appoint me attorney general. Uh, but I think we have a, a good candid relationship. Just one more question on that. You met with him in the Oval Office? No, I met with him in the residence. In the residence. And that went well? Yeah. Did he hire you on the spot? I'm not going to get into the... The reason I ask you that is Democrats would charge that you are the president's attorney now. They don't know what they're talking about. Back here in El Salvador Live, before we close out our three-hour broadcast, just want to bring you a little more of our interview with Bill Barr as he talks about, well, he's known Bob Mueller for a very long time. Let's go to that right now. When did you speak with him last, correspond with him? The last I talked to him was, uh, I think, the Thursday after uh, he delivered his report when we had a telephone call. But there's no... So that's been several weeks. Yeah, but there's no, it, that's not because of any strain between us or anything. Your relationship goes back 30 years. That's right. How is it today? I, I haven't had the opportunity to spend much time with him since he took on the assignment. I haven't spent time with him since he took on the assignment, but I would say we're still friends. Uh, another topic here on his relationship with the president. There's been a lot of criticism from Democrats saying that he's doing the president's work. We asked about that as well. The reason I ask you that is Democrats would charge that you are the president's attorney now. Yeah, they don't know what they're talking about. Did you think that Eric Holder was the attorney for President Obama? Uh, I, think, I think Eric Holder at times did act that way, but attorney generals are frequently accused of that. Is it like Bobby Kennedy and JFK from the early 60s? 
I mean, they're accused of, attorneys general are, are accused of being that way, but I'm not sure exactly what they're referring to. Well, I, you know, when I was uh, up for confirmation, I promised that I was going to make the report available. I didn't have to. The report was supposed to be confidential. I said I would err on the side of transparency. I got it out. There were minimal redactions. Every American can now read it to their heart's content and make up their mind about it.